Okay, I thought I'd do a uh, review. It's been a full year since I uh, added the NJ NEJE 30 watt laser head, which was what 5.5 watts optical or something like that. Uh, the VigoTech unit itself, which I actually had had for over four months longer than that, so I guess one year, four months ago, I bought it. It's an uh, inexpensive laser head. Worked great until I tried running it at 100% power once to burn some 3 millimeter wood, which it did. But after it did that, it was no longer able to engrave tiles or glass or anything like that. I could only... I could only engrave wood and paper and cardboard and stuff like that, so it had lost that much power just from being run at 100% power once. It's a very uh, inexpensive head. So when I had a chance to get the NJE one, it w at that time it was $109 um, for more power and it was supposed to be have a longer life. The, uh, the really cheap one that came with the VigoTech is like a 10 to 20 hour laser before the power starts dropping off and if you run it 100 percent power it drops off a lot quicker now all diode lasers, well in fact all lasers whether it's COT or diode lose power over time and it becomes a function of how hard you're pushing them so I thought I'd let you know that after a year the uh, NEJE is still working great for me it hasn't really changed uh, things that I have done since then is I have added a simple air assist. This pipe comes up here. It's coming back to an airbrush pump. I had a, a small airbrush pump which I added a speed control to and I'm just using it to blow some air through that little tube down there and the air assist of course helps a great deal. Uh, if you followed all the other videos that you realize that you can buy metal jack stands, these flat collapsible stands. This is a 3D printed one that I found on Thingiverse and if you look back on my other videos you'll find uh, links to that in case you want to 3D print your own. I blew it up in scale to make it a little bit larger. Um, it's much handier for focusing your laser. Of course it isn't hard to change the focus since you just get a wrench and have to do that but it's much easier just to turn the uh, handle on the jack stand and raise it until you're in focus. Uh, what else? Uh, instead of cutting, when I'm cutting clear through things, I usually lay it on this aluminum heat sink because that allows the smoke and the air assist to blow all the way through the cut rather than when you're cutting on a surface you're going to end up burning the bottom side of the wood basically. And of course if you followed all the videos from the past you'd know that I had uh, made some extender legs at one point so that I could put the uh, rotary attachment which is sitting back there underneath there and have it high enough. I mean, it's not required, I just did it for the fun of it. I mean you can just stack some bricks or blocks of wood and raise your beam unit up. What else? Um, I'm going to try cutting a square right now in one pass. It is uh, connected up with the computer in here. I'm going to send it to it via Wi-Fi. Ooh. I gotta have my glasses or I won't be able to walk back in there. Let me get my glasses on. Okay. I have it in that bathroom because I have a window vent fan and there's also the ceiling vent fan and I can close the door to that bathroom so I don't have to, here we go, hit start. There it goes. So I don't have to worry about uh, dogs or animals or people or anybody getting interfered. Oh, didn't turn my air assist on. Let's get that going. So you can see the light underneath the uh, the unit it means it's cutting all the way through the wood. I would normally turn this uh, vent fan on up here, but it's a very noisy fan. I do have the window fan running, so that'll suck some of the smoke out. Okay, I think I believe it's just finished up. So let's take a look. There's the top side. Here's the bottom side. There it is. It could have uh, charred a little bit, but it cut through it. There's a little uh, rabbit that I uh, cut through. I believe on the rabbit I went faster in two passes. This one we just did in one pass, and um, 
Let's take a look at the settings. Not that it matters because it's different for everybody's machine and every time wood and all that good stuff. Hit cancel. So basically uh, this time I was just going at 100 millimeters per minute. 80% power. I never go over 80% power. And it was just on the uh, box outline. So just thought I'd let you know because I keep getting asked all the time how's it going? Is it still working? Yes, it still works just fine. It still can do tile and glass and all of that can still burn through wood. So it's uh, the NEJE 30 watt, they call it, which is really... What is it in real life? Let's look at their piece of paper here. In case you've never looked at their, their specs on it. You can see some of their good stuff there. But I mean, if the optical is only 5.5 watts or something, that's still not bad. This predates some of the cool laser modules that you can get now. I mean, this still has the rectangular dot, so it's not as efficient. Because right after this came out, then all of a sudden there were a whole flurry of new laser diodes out that uh, had a, a more square dot, which means it's going to condense the power in a smaller area, so better burn. And then there were all the ones where they were taking the same diode that's in here and putting two of them in a the package and focusing them into one beam. So you could get like 10 watts of optical power. And then there's the, the even newer ones now that reduce the, the dot size by about half of what this thing is. They're like down to what, 0 0.08? I think 0 .0, uh, 0.1 is more normal, but some are claiming like 0 0.08 on the dot size, which is really small. So if you have the same amount of power focused in half the amount of space it gives you a whole lot more burn power without having to go to 100% or doing a double laser diode or any of that kind of stuff so it's kind of uh, interesting where it's all heading right now and there was one brand out there which the name escapes me at the moment they um, changed their focusing not just to get the smaller dot but to change the sweet spot of that dot so when you're burning through things if you're focused on the top right now by the time you get to the bottom of course your dot is spreading out so you kind of lose power and they had uh, changed their optics in such a way that that sweet spot that the laser can burn in is bigger so that would make it easier for the diode laser to burn through things better focusing smaller dot a lot of improvements have come but that was only 109 bucks for this and a year later it's still working so I consider that a good investment and what else I think I think that's about all I had to say about this if you want to know why we purchased we the wife and I went with the Vigo tech back when we did that's covered in other uh, videos but the long and short of it is it was hundred and seventy four dollars and it offered some features that others in that price range didn't offer at that time I wanted a unit that could be run standalone didn't have to be connected to a computer by Wi-Fi or cable it actually has an SD card slot on there and even though this machine only recognizes one file name the file name always is the same I can load that SD card on my computer and and then take this out to the shop or wherever the machine might happen to be and just put the card in and burn directly from the card. Their way of doing it was intended that you would send the file information to the machine via Wi-Fi if you wanted and you could save it to the card. Then by using these buttons on the side you can actually burn the same thing repeatedly um, without having to have a continuous Wi-Fi connection or without having to have a USB connection. That was important to me at the time. The other thing that was important was this one was super basic. I uh, figured the wife was mostly going to be using her for her crafts, for um, you know, burning wood, paper, cardboard. But uh, actually we spent almost all of our time doing uh, tiles and uh, glass. And so that uh, worked out well because that way she can just grab clip art, line art offline. You can take a JPEG off your camera and just throw it into the software that came with it. And that worked out good. If you're going to custom build your own files and mechanical parts, then this really isn't the machine for you because the, it's a proprietary software that you use with it. 
and that doesn't allow you to uh, do those sorts of things. Now, the control board itself is just a control board. You could, in fact, flash different uh, firmware on there, and then you could use light burn or whatever you wanted to control the unit. But that wasn't the objective when we purchased this machine. It was more price and the ease of use for the wife, really. So, if I buy another one, obviously I'm going to buy a more complete unit where I can run light burn on it because that way I can, in fact, start doing mechanical parts on it, like wooden robots. All right, that's it. Talk to you guys later.